morning. We Good afternoon. Stand for all this time. Oh, thank you all. Thank you. Did I buy that? We just made it just now. Just made it. It's teamwork right here. We all collaborated. You got that from the antique shops? We did. <laughs> yeah. All right. What you got? Sir? Everybody ready? Yes, sir. All right. Good afternoon. I'm here with the commander of the 8th District. Uh -oh. I'm going to hurry up. I'm going to hurry up. If you clip it to the hairy one, too, I'll bet. Just let it hang. There you go. Oh, All right. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm here with Commander Nick Garner, who's the commander of the 8th District, and members of the 8th District team are standing with us. Um, we're very happy and thrilled to tell you that we've made a second arrest last night of Joshua Simmons, who was one of the perpetrators in this weekend's simple robbery and battery. Um, we told you that it would not be long before we had these subjects in custody and our arrest warrants for them. That is exactly what we have delivered. With the hard work of this team, who've been working around the clock, um, we told you we knew who they were. We told you all along we knew their names, we knew who they were. And last night, Joshua Simmons uh, was arrested by the help of a citizen who alerted us to his location. And so we're certainly grateful for that community help and participation that we're always asking for and always talking about being so important. And so now that we have Joshua Simmons in custody, we have arrest warrants for two other individuals who are responsible for this heinous attack that occurred. So I'm gonna let Commander Gernon talk about that, but two are in custody. We have arrest warrants for two. Our violent offender warrant squad with the help of the U.S. Marshals have been out most of the night and most of this morning looking for those two individuals. We're still, we have still yet to find them, but I'm urging them to turn themselves in. They should not make this harder on themselves than it has to be. The warrants are out there for them. We know who they are. You can't hide, so you should turn yourselves into us. We're waiting here at the 8th District to receive you. Now I'll turn it over to the commander who can get into a little bit more specific. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chief. So Right now, wanted for the, um, this, in, this incident, this third and fourth individuals are Nicholas Palgowski, 18-year-old black male, and Rashad Piper, 20-year-old uh, black male. They're both wanted for second-degree robbery. We would urge that they turn themselves in as soon as possible. Uh, like the chief said, the U.S. Marshals, in conjunction with the Violent Offenders Warrant Squad, are out there actively searching for them. Uh, when we locate them, they will be arrested. And those two individuals are the ones who you saw attack the victim who was not in critical condition. So um, Mr. Simmons and Mr. Paul attacked the individual who eventually ended up in critical condition, and then Mr. Pawgowski and Mr. Piper attacked the second victim. Were they all residents of Covenant House? Not all of them. So what we know is that these incidents, this incident right now, we do not believe, uh, is tied to other incidents that occurred in the downtown area. They're all under investigation, but we do not believe this is part of any larger pattern of bad incidents. What we believe that this is a standalone incident and now all four subjects are going to be held accountable for what they did to the two gentlemen who were visiting New Orleans. We're told that three of the four suspects uh, were staying at Covenant House. In fact, at least two of them gave Covenant House as their permanent address. Confirm that? So some of them were um, staying at the Covenant House, but as far as which ones when, I, I, I don't know if it's absolutely appropriate to talk about at this time. When it Commander, comes to do the, you have, do you have ongoing cases of uh, tenants at Covenant House committing crime in the French Quarter? Is that an ongoing problem? I, I don't think it'd be appropriate to comment on this. As for the, the victim, uh, an assistant district attorney used the line. He said close to death as describing him, and they asked the judge, as you all are well aware, to delay this because this could be upgraded to a first degree murder charge. Uh, what is your uh, what is your understanding of the condition of this victim, and is that accurate, close to death? We went to visit both individuals the same night, immediately after this happened. Uh, one was able to talk with us, was pretty stable that night. The other was in critical condition. What was told to us, he had an acute brain injury, but he has uh, somewhat improved and is now off of the ventilator and breathing on his own, but still not able to fully engage the way we would need. Uh, so his condition, we believe, has improved, but it's still critical. If, if he, of course, everybody in his hometown, his family, are, are rooting for the best, but as prosecutors alluded to, if this does turn out to be a fatality, would you all push 
for a first degree and for a death penalty case, given the high profile nature of this? It, it is our job to seek the truth. We will certainly confer with the district attorney's office, but that would be uh, a decision made by the district attorney's office. But it is our job to present the facts as they are presented to us and as they occurred. Uh, and then certainly we'll con consult with the district attorney, but um, that will, will happen at that time if it should come to that. Did the individuals turn themselves into you or were they brought in by the pastor and by somebody at Covenant House? So the first individual, Mr. Paul, turned himself into his pastor, then his pastor contacted us and made some arrangements for us to come and get him. Uh, the second individual, um, a citizen contacted us, told us where to find him, and we located him at that location. And of course, the other two are still wanted, and we really would urge them to come forward and turn themselves in. Any word on how much blood Mr. Byrne may have lost? We do not know. No. Is it known if Mr. Paul is cognizant? Are you aware if he's mentally challenged in any way from what people have told you or what you all uh, found out when you questioned them? I think that requires a medical diagnosis, and we're not, you know, we're not qualified to make a medical diagnosis. Certainly, we uh, made the arrest. He was brought in and processed like any other arrest, but I think that will require medical diagnosis. Can you characterize his and Mr. S uh, Simmons' level of cooperation with police at this point? I think it'd be premature to talk about whether they're cooperating, whether and a lot of that's case sensitive, and we're going to defer to the district attorney's office on that. We are two of the suspects um, that you have in custody were mentally ill. Again, that requires yeah. a diagnosis by a doctor. Can you tell us if, uh, and with respect to, to Mr. Tim Byrne, was there any object in um, Mr. Paul's hand when he went up behind and smacked the guy? Uh, we're told that he could have had like a brass knuckles or something to that effect. So if we find evidence that supports that, then we would confer with the district attorney's office and possibly make a recommendation of an armed robbery charge. But at this point, because I don't have any evidence that suggests that there's a weapon used, then second degree robbery is the appropriate decision. Do you think a medical evaluation is needed in this case when it comes to Mr. Paul, Mr. Paul and others? I think that's for his attorneys to request. Chief, do you, do you support the judge's decision to hold these individuals without bond at this point? I do. This was a very heinous act, very unnecessary, very heinous, and it speaks to the, the, uh, their propensity to commit a very violent attack, and so I certainly agree with that. It's not our names. The two we'll get it for you. Okay. We're going to have to put this down. All right. Thank you so much, guys. How close are you on, on the other two arrests? That you, you say you have arrests. Violent offender warrant. We have arrest warrants on file. Violent offender warrant squads, with the help of the U.S. Marshals, went to search for them uh, late last night and early this morning. Still out looking for them, but to no avail at this point. Do you know when um, when the hospital maybe will give an update on the man still in the hospital? Uh, we will check, but I, I don't know when they'll do it. But I'll, I'll go and check again before the end of the day. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Come in here. Hey, Bo, you have his name by chance? Do you have the name?